Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here a Range Rover Vilar. It's got an issue with the DPF on it. I've got another lad here working with me today from Revive DPF. And what we're doing is we're going to replace the particulate matter sensor on this. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a 2019 Range Rover Velar. Uh, it's a 2 litre Ingenium. And here is the part number. This is the sensor right here. What this does is it detects if you're getting particles after the DPF. So if we pop that off, this is what it looks like. So this vehicle has the engine management light on and uh, here is some of the fault codes that we have or one of the fault codes P24C6-00 Particulate Matter Sensor Temperature Circuit So this is this tool I'm using here I'm just having a little play around with it I don't use it much It's Ansel Now I do prefer my, my um, launch it's nice to just have a play around with something else sometimes. We've got our live data here. Uh, we don't have a search bar. Again, this is just one of the very minor issues that makes me want to use my launch because the launch is just a lot more quick. There's no search bar to find the particulate matter sensor here. Anyway, a simpler term for me to show you here is on this is if I try to clear the fall code and then we go back to read it, it's immediately straight back. Now, even though the engine light has gone out when we've cleared the fall code, it will come back on within sort of 5 or 10 miles of driving the car. But you can see the fall code does not clear, so we're going to turn the engine off, ignition on, we'll try to clear that again. Raised successfully. If we give that a minute, it will come back on. If we start the engine, start it back up. And we give that a couple of minutes, that fault code will return. And there we have it. Particular temperature sensor circuit, and uh, we've also got this one as well now U02A3 87. So, this is one of the main issues on Euro 6's Euro 6 vehicles. Where if this was a Euro 5, say for instance, and you had a minor crack on your DPF, it, as long as the, the DPF pressure is in wood, wood intolerance, then you'd be you'd be fine you know your dpf has damage on it but it's still within its parameters so it wouldn't chuck up a fault i think obviously i don't know if it's government regulations have made them sort of get stricter on it or is, is it just the manufacturers thinking hang on a minute we can make some more money here by not only fitting a sensor that's going to cost 350 pound for you to buy but also that sensor if you have any soot particulates coming past the DPF you will get a fault code logged up for this so that's the reason why on Euro 5s where I can wipe my finger there is some soot on it but the DPF itself is not chucking up a fault the pressure is sort of at five or six millibars it's everything's still within range but there is some damage on the DPF because it's passing some soot you won't get away with that on one of these newer cars if it does pass soot this particulate matter sensor is sort of like a laser I believe and if soot goes past it breaks the laser uh, it disturbs the the whatever you call it the laser ray um, and then that is triggered as particulate matter obviously then on this one we have a temperature circuit fault within the sensor so it's also got a temperature sensor in it and that's why we are going to be replacing it Okay, so that is the old sensor out. 
So we did use one of these spanners, it's a Wera Joker, self-adjusting 19 to 24 mil spanner. It is a 24 mil that you need on it. Okay, so we're just getting a new sensor fitted on there. Johnny's doing that under the van. So on this Ansel, I'm gonna go in and check if we have any sort of calibrations that need to be done. So we have particulate filter replacement and dynamic regens. As far as I know, there is no particular adaptions that need to be reset for this, this sensor. So we're just gonna go back in and uh, clear the fault take it on a test drive and just make sure that the fault code hasn't come back obviously you test your your powers and grounds and that you're getting signal down at the at the plug okay so we have no fault codes present and we will now take the vehicle on a test drive we'll do a couple of miles and just rescan it make sure that the fault code has vanished so we're just taking it on a test drive uh, up and down the A1, maybe five or six miles or so. I haven't really counted it exactly, but all is well. Engine light hasn't come back on, and we will now recheck the fault codes. So, if we come back over to the Ancel here, no fault codes are present. So, before the fault code would d distinguish obviously but as soon as you start the the vehicle the fault code would come back the engine light wouldn't reappear until you've driven sort of five or ten miles or so then the engine light would come back on but the fault code was persistent and we see now that we have resolved that the fault code has gone that's it all finished on this one and i'll see you on the next video Once again.